Hey guys, welcome back to Home Build, and in this episode, we are going to continue working on the bonnet bulge. Okay, guys, welcome back. And if uh, doing stupid projects like putting uh, big Ferrari engines into old cars uh, is your sort of thing, please um, subscribe. We're getting so close to that 100K, it's just, oh, I can taste it. So those of you watching last week will have uh, seen that I obviously started building my bonnet bulge for this car. And as I knew it would be, it was very controversial. Some of you love it, some of you really hate it, some think I should do it another way, some think I should do whatever. I'll just go over at least some of my ideas for this build as it, as it is and uh, some of the reasons why I chose to do things as I did. Um, a lot of people suggested that they thought it would look better if it was sort of molded in better to the body of the car. And I actually disagree with that. I really wanted to keep this as a, to look like a, another part, like to look like an addition. I didn't want it to be perfectly blended into the car because I think that ruins the shape of the car um, that Jajaro originally designed. I think this is a beautiful car. And if I could have kept this under the bonnet, I would have. Um, I didn't want to go ITBs. I, I want to keep these plenums, and there's just that's the only way to keep these plenums in the car is to do it this way. Uh, so that is why I didn't do it. I mean, I'm not really a big fan of the uh, the GTAM uh, wide body flares. They are period correct, and uh, they were designed for the car, and they blend into the car. But I think overall, they they ruin the shape of the car. They really uh, they really affect the look of the original design in my eyes and that's just uh, so they're just not for me and I, and I didn't want to do that same sort of thing with this bonnet bolt so I wanted it to look separate as a, another addition which is why there's going to be this sort of this sharp-ish transition here I think it still matches in with the flow of uh, how this car sort of is it's sort of some round some sharper edges um, yeah oh, I think I think it works uh, a lot of people were suggesting to put a scoop into this at the front. Uh, putting a scoop into the front of the car is a terrible idea. Um, basically, the big issue with uh, adding air at the bonnet stage is it creates a high pressure area in the, in the uh, engine bay, uh, basically either sort of forcing the air down or just basically creating drag and just, unless you're actually um, for a purpose, for example, a, a Subaru WRX, with a top mount intercooler, pushes the air through the intercooler. That is how they cool the uh, the intercooler. But generally, if you're gonna have a scoop on a bonnet, I really think it should be going backwards. So venting air out, I think that's a better, better option. But in this case, we're gonna seal it up. Yes, don't want a scoop in it. And there is no way to fit throttle bodies uh, on the front here and then air filters and stuff. The air filters will be out here. I covered this a long time ago, uh, just uh, with the plenum. I actually, already turned this around 180 degrees. Lots of people think I should put it back the other way. The thing is, is by the time I turn this around and then have throttle bodies on it, it's going straight through the plenum into the dash. There's just, there's no way to have the center of the dash. It, it won't work. And I, I'd have to remove all the, uh, the windscreen wiper movements. This is gonna be a road car. If it was a race car, no problems. But this is a road car and it has to function like a road car. So anyway, moving on. I think it's time to uh, continue working on this and, uh, and sort of mocking up what I need to do. Like I mentioned last week, um, I'm not done with this square opening. Obviously I don't like the square opening on this. And I did mention I'm gonna curve off these corners. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do now is try and work out the uh, dimensions for these curves and make up the corner pieces that I'm gonna weld in to, uh, to round this thing up. All right, so as you saw, I, um, I cut out a couple of bits of uh, flat steel plate that matches this, and, um, and I cut out a bunch of these little sort of angled 
sections, little corner sections that I'm going to now weld into the corners of the uh, of the top here. Uh, both the top and the uh, the underside, so both layers. So they'll be double layered, just like everything else, uh, around the top edges, because uh, that's where I obviously want to finish off and have nice sort of rounded corners on the uh, on the top of this. So let's get the welder out and start tacking these into place. All right, that is looking much better. I like the shape of that much better now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to pull out that lower frame, get it back out of there, and then uh, I'm gonna start welding it all up together. I've got my, um, my shape there as how I want it. It's gonna be a lot of welding. So uh, let's go. All right, that was a lot of welding. I ended up doing it with the MIG because there's just so many, there were so many gaps, it wasn't very clean. And on these internal corners, <laughs> um, it's definitely uh, the whole bonnet has sunk and warped in. So this is gonna be the fun bit of A, grinding it all back, and then B, trying to uh, flatten it all out again and get it all in the way, uh, get it all looking good again, because at the moment it does not look good. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I created uh, a lot of work for myself. So let's start. Uh, let's start tackling the grinding. Yay! It's really coming together. Um, yeah, I've managed to get out a lot of the warp. I mean, the bonnet is definitely not flat. Uh, there is still some structure underneath, which is making it harder to get, uh, sort of get tools underneath to be able to get some of these, uh, these sort of low spots out. But I'm going through gradually just with uh, hammer and dollies and also using my straight edge and going over things with the straight edge and going, okay, well, that that's supposed to be, you know, this way. and. It's just a matter of just tapping and tweaking and moving around to try and get this all back into shape again because I do make things harder than I need to. I know that I should have taken more time to do this. TIG welding is good if you can TIG weld and then sort of uh, hammer out each individual weld, sort of tack, hammer, tack, hammer, tack, hammer. Um, the issue with this is it's harder on, a, on an edge it's actually, uh, in some ways, it's it's easier to to do it on a f on a dead flat panel, or or you know, if I'd done it, put a lip on the bottom of this and made it flat into the bonnet, then I could sort of hammer it out and sort of take my time and get it get it right. So um, yeah, all it's done is really just made more work for me, hammering and uh, and and getting this all to fit just right. It's getting there slowly. More panel work to do. Let's keep going.
So this has been a couple of hours now, uh, sort of getting the bonnet back into shape. Basically this front edge had flattened out, so these corners would lift it up. The nose was tucked down. Um, it's still got a way to go. This, uh, this corner's still a little bit high. This corner's a little bit low. Um, that one's a little bit high. Yeah, just, just going backwards and forwards and tweaking everything. There's still, there's a low spot here. There's, uh, there's it's sort of, there's a low dip along here. There's, there's lots of backwards and forwards and minute panel beading just to get everything nice and flat and smooth the way I want it. And some of it is chasing my tail a little bit because I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll fix a, a, a bump here and it creates something else back over here. But it's getting closer and closer. I'm just gradually working it. A lot of this stuff is just not fast. It's it's spending the time to do it and, uh, and to get it right. And again, if I'd taken more time when I was actually welding it, I probably would have saved myself a lot of headache. Um, it is very difficult to not get any warp in, uh, in flat sheet metal at all when you're welding it. It's, it's extremely difficult. Any of you who've, who've, who've genuinely tried it, or particularly on a big flat area, big flat area is the worst because there's just nowhere for any to go. There's nowhere to hide, there's no edges. Yeah, it, uh, it makes it rough. So um, we're getting there though. It's, uh, it's getting there slowly, but surely we're getting there. All right, so I've Pretty much glossed over what I've done here. I've spent pretty much all day going backwards and forwards, getting everything right. But um, it is starting to look really good. It's uh, I can still tweak it a little bit when I finally go to the uh, the final uh, body fitment stage when I do actually start doing the uh, the final body finishing. But uh, I am pretty happy with that. It is looking pretty good. So now it's time to flip it up the other way and see if I can add some structure back into it without making it twist anymore. Oh, well, that was a lot of work in this episode to appear like I haven't really come that far from last week. I mean, the, the basic structure was here last week, but um, getting it all to be one piece is a lot of work, <laughs> but it's actually looking good. I am really happy with the, uh, with the result. I think, it's, uh, I think it works with the design of the car. As I said, I wanted it to look like an addition. I think it does. I think it doesn't, yeah, it, it doesn't detract from the shape of the car too much. Okay, yes, it is bigger than, uh, than I wanted, as I mentioned. It's just, that's what it needs to be when you put a Ferrari engine in a little Alfa Romeo. So uh, <laughs> in any case, I think that is looking good. So I think it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1977, after an almost 30 year hiatus, Alfa Romeo began work on a new Formula One car. The 177 was a bulky car designed by Auto Delta and featured a riveted aluminium chassis and inboard front suspension. It was powered by Alfa Romeo's 3 litre naturally aspirated flat 12 engine taken from the 33 TT12. The car met its Formula One season debut in round six of the 1979 championship at Zolder, driven by Bruno Giacomali, who was fresh from winning the 1978 Formula Two championship at the well. He qualified at 14th, but after a poor start at the end of the first lap, he was back to 18th. He fought hard and scrabbled back to 13th before he was taken out by another driver and DNF'd. Two rounds later, he managed to finish the race in 17th. At Monza Giacomelli was driving the new 179, while Vittorio Brambilla was given the drive in the 177. Giacomelli DNF'd, but Brambilla managed to finish in 12th, making that the best result for the 177, as it only ever competed in these three races. All right, guys, and today we have another episode of Mail Time, and uh, this one was actually uh, a bit different. Uh, 
a guy in uh, Queensland, Art by Joel on Instagram, reached out to me and uh, and actually tagged me in a picture that he'd done, and he sent me this, which is absolutely amazing. So um, if I can get a good clear picture of this, this painting is absolutely fantastic. Go and check out his work. Awesome, this is going to be uh, quite prized, uh, definitely going up in the house, uh, and, and thank you very much, Joel, this is amazing. And if you guys have got anything, stickers or whatever, the wall that you want to send through, uh, send them through to Home Built by Jeff, PO Box 1520, Barrel, New South Wales, 2576, Australia. All right, that's uh, another week where it really didn't feel like I did that much. I mean, last week I had a, uh, what looked like almost finished bonnet bulge, and this week, <laughs> I've got an almost finished bottle of but it's getting there. I am quite happy with how it's turning out. Um, trying to get these things just right. Panel work just takes so much time. It's really a time suck, but it's uh, but it's really uh, it's really starting to look the part. I am I am quite happy with the progress. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we're we're chipping away as always. And the devil's in the detail. That We've is very said that true. So many times that it's so true. It's just. What these things take to get them done, but, but it's uh, not the, I'm, it's I'm not enjoying. The, yeah, it's not the glamorous part of car. No, but, but it's, it's actually so the stuff important. I really enjoy. I really enjoy the metal work. Really, just, you find it relaxing? Yeah, yeah. I like being able to see it sort of ah, come the come to shape. So anyway, interesting. Hope you're enjoying it. If you'd like to see the um, a like day early without start. any ads, please join us on Patreon. And um, yep, yeah, will uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, I. You know, those who've been following me will have seen this sort of evolution over the last few weeks. Uh, a little hint and tips are, um, ahead of schedule. So, uh, anyway. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> we'll see you next time. See you guys. Okay. And inboard motor suspension. Front suspension. What the hell is inboard motor suspension? <laughs> exactly. I don't know what that is. And it featured riveted aluminium suspension. And inboard front suspension. Yes. <sighs> yeah, that's what you got written. 33TT. No. What is, what, what, Hang what's, on, sorry. What's that? This is this Okay. Just <sighs> wreck this people. The car made its. <sighs> powered by Giacomelli. No. Driven by in round six. How Bruno. Was <laughs> he was peddling. <laughs> <laughs> Or Victorio Bambin Lay. <laughs> <laughs> so hard. Whew.